Right, we need some balls. No. No. Oh, no. Right, we'll pick him up, drop the legs up, put him down, shorten that, and we're kind of almost ready to go. Uh, I think I'll pull him out of the brambles first, though. He's still complaining in there. All right, we kind of want this to go down fairly level. I want to shorten the top link a bit. OK, some of you might not know what this is, because this is basically two machines made into one. So I'll put a bit of grease right in there, then I'll turn the tractor off and I'll tell you what we're doing. So, slitting, turf slitting, especially after the long wet winter we've had. Um, you get a lot of rain, it can, it can cause what's called capping on the ground, especially if your grass is a bit thin, it can be it just basically seals the top layer of the soil. Worms will help to aerate the soil, but this guy, that's the depth he goes into in there, literally makes a row of slits in the soil, six to eight inches deep. And basically that lets air into the topsoil to um, help roots, grass roots, respire. Now, uh, plants need to respire, they need to absorb oxygen and carbon dioxide. But um, if there's no gaseous exchange between the roots of the grass and the atmosphere, it can slow your crop right down. So I've heard tell that slitting is the equivalent of 20 kilos of nitram per acre. That's what it does. It encourages root growth, encourages uh, microbiota in the soil, just breakdown of organic materials, all that kind of good stuff. So that's the Ritchie Slitter. This is my Browns rake. Now, Browns also make a slitter. But I'd bought the Ritchie one, and then I saw somebody else with a Brown slitter with this thing on the back, and on the Browns one, this is built to make, to go straight on the back, back of a Brown slitter. It was built for the job but it's not made to go on this. So we got Tim, our barn builder, to make this bracket. And all this, this, just this bit here, that bit there, that bolts onto the frame of this. And then uh, we can slide this uh, rake up and down. We've got like probably, you know, eight, 10 inches of movement on there. We can also adjust the harshness of the rake on this little top link here. So this is basically set up for our way of the farm. One pass, two jobs. So I'm gonna go up and down this field. We're gonna make lovely, pretty strikes in the field. It's gonna look like a cricket pitch when we're done. Set the lines won't be quite so straight. And um, we're going to A, aerate the topsoil 
and give the roots of the grass some um, much needed oxygen, air. And we're also going to rake the surface, which will help pull out moss. So these guys are here to pull out moss, uh, rip up thatch, and literally also break up the surface of the ground. So, I mean, when we've done, the grass is going to be going, oh my God, what on earth was that? And then after it's going to go, that was fantastic. Um, and I, I'm convinced it makes a difference. I've had quite a few people, there's a fairly famous rugby player over in, um, he's over that way somewhere. And he's messaged me a couple of times with reference to this. And if he's watching this, he knows who he is. Um, and he's got a little small holding and he wanted to know if I thought this was worth it. And I think it is. I mean, the whole combination to buy that new, I don't know. I think this, this guy was prob is probably going to be the best part of 1800 to 2000 pound now. And that fella there, three and a half, four maybe. So it's a few quids worth of kit, but it's fr equivalent of free fertilizer. That's how I look at it. 20 kilos of nitram per acre. I still got to do a pass the tractor, but I'm helping the soil, I'm ripping out the thatch. One pass, two jobs. Got it? Yeah, right, let's bang a bit of grease around these guys, and then we'll get on our way. There he is. There's actually quite a bit of grease around already, but you know what, we'll just give it a bit more. That's that one. Right, the one in the middle is a bit harder to get to. And we don't want to get too involved with getting right inside there because if the hydraulics should fail on the tractor, I don't want to have any bit of me under that. But that's what we're looking for there. One there, and there is one to the other side. So yeah, we're going to have to struggle for that one, aren't we? One side. Let's go and climb over the rake. Uh, Actually, do you know what? I'll do that end, I'll put this down, and then I'll climb over the rake because it won't be so high. These heads are brilliant, but there are just times when they're just that little bit tiny too big to get in where I want it to go. Lock on. We'll just go slowly. Ugh. I won't be doing this when I was 75. Well, I don't know, maybe I will. You on? It's looking very um, grey and wet up there. While I'm walking back from pick up the camera, just in case it starts chucking their rain, I don't get a chance. What is that doing? Well, it's cutting these slits in the turf, and they're kind of every six inches. So it just lets air in, and then the rake is coming along afterwards and pulling the crap out. Not that there's an awful lot up here. Um, and hopefully pulling this up as well. So we mucked this before Christmas and you can actually see it's brought a little bit of the muck back to the top again. 
That doesn't matter because the cattle won't be going out for a couple of weeks yet, by which time this will all have gone back down. And I'm kind of hoping this is going to stimulate grass growth. What we might do, actually, is in one of the bottom fields, when I slip there, I might leave a couple of strips unslit, if I remember, and then we could have a comparison before and after. So, yeah, probably the bottom right-hand field. We'll leave a uh, five-metre strip or something, and then later in the year, we can come back and say, well, proof of the pudding is, I can't tell the difference, or there's definitely more grass there than there is there. So, uh, right, crack on. Making the tractor work, my dad's 695 probably would pull this on level ground, but I reckon if I did it up Pigeon Mead, going uphill, I reckon the 695 would belch trying to pull this, so it's not just the slitter I'm pulling through the soil, it's, it's the rake, which I'm, and I'm scratching quite hard. So, uh, yeah, right then, we've got a few hours of this. Kind of nice to be back on the tractor for a bit. Nice to be on the field. What is it? April the 8th. And it's the first time I've had the tractor out here this year. Oh, before anybody says your lines aren't very straight, that's deliberate. Um, I'm not going to slit and rake the footpath. So I'm going to go up both sides of the footpath. I'm not going to go across the footpath. I'm going to leave it like it. Because I mow it, I pour quite a lot of um, mud up with this won't do the mower any good. At the end of the day, I don't actually want to encourage that much grass growth on the footpath. So because the footpath has got a bit of a curve to it, I'm following that. Um, when I'm rolling, well, then I might go in straight lines. But for this job, slitting, yeah, we're going to follow the contour of the footpath right across both sides of the field. Just so you know, before you, you know, judge. Listen to the engine change and I pull it up. Yeah. So we're revving, free revving, as in with the machine not in the work at 16, 1800 RPM. And with the machine in the work, we are going uphill now. shade over 15 so uh, yeah it's working him he's doing some work it's given the choice I would have done this late February early March but there was no way I would have made a proper mess even even thinking about it would have made a mess so yeah the ground is Still plenty soft enough now. I mean, the spikes are going in, no problem. They're just starting to shine up now. But um, yeah, it's, uh, there was no point in doing this before. Grass is growing, but it hasn't really kicked off yet. You don't want to be doing this when your grass is on full steam ahead, if you can help it. So I, I usually think of um, first couple of months of the year and last couple of months of the year, if you can. So I'll slit again in the autumn as much as anything else, that's to open the ground up to improve drainage. Just gets the water away. Right, I want to lift up over the footpath. Excuse me, I've got to look what I'm doing. We're in four-wheel drive. Um, going down, I'd probably be all right in two-wheel drive, but coming back up, pretty sure I'd get some slip. So, again, rather than make mess, I'm just employing four-wheel drives. A little bit more fuel, but um, not that much.
that one. And there's that one. Hello, Biscuit. The mugs. The mugs were a present for uh, Famous Dave. He wanted me to get some of those. I've been over to our merchandise folks this afternoon and picked up a load more um, Farmer P caps. So we do now have some of those in stock. Lots of people have asked. So um, at the moment, you can get them through Farmer P's pantry, through Holly's um, pie page. You can get them through there. Mrs P is looking at creating a web page and she has started it. But I've got to do some photographs and stuff. So, right, we're just going down the yard and find out what that cow is mooing about. She's making a fuss, and there's only a few reasons why. Um, and I think it's her calf. I think we've got an issue. Um, I noticed this morning, if it's who I think it is, he looked a bit squitty. I think he might have the scours. Um, so we might have another calf to treat. <coughs> now go down and we'll find out. Anyway, all the sitting and raking for today is done. Got that finished. I, I didn't think you'd want to watch any more of that. You got the idea this morning. Is that you there? Is it you? He looks all right. Or is it that one in there? Which is your calf? Is it that one or that one? Eh? Which one is it? Let's have a look, see. Are you all right? Are you the one she's whinging about? He's a little bit loose, a little bit runny squitty. He is actually quite runny squitty. Right. I might, um, I think that might be a trip to the vets tomorrow to get some stuff for you. Right. Um, squitty calves. So do I go with a sachet or do I go with a little bolus? He's a bit droopy in the eye. Yeah. He, she doesn't look very happy. He doesn't look very bright, does he? Hey. All right, darling, I'll, um, I'll sort him out. Don't you worry. I'd like to see him get on the tit. <laughs> if he gets on the tit, I'll be happy. All right, darling. Yeah, he is a little bit, isn't he? I've seen worse. Right. All right, darling. Hmm. So I expect what it is, Calf's feeling a bit under the weather. She's got a udder full of milk and she's uncomfortable. And he wanted him to come out and suck her out. So I would, I would like to see him get on the tit. Not for you to knock him off. He was, he was literally, he was literally that. And she knocked him off. He's not very well. So we'll check on him in the morning, but I think he's got scourers. So, yeah. You gotta watch out for that, because they can go down there quite quickly with that. Um, and I've... I don't think I've got a drench left. I used it on the last one, didn't I? I didn't replace it. Right, okay. So tomorrow, in amongst the other jobs, a trip to the vets and we'll get something to give him and a couple of spares, so that's my bad. I should have got them in. I could have given him some tonight, but it's, they're all, they're shut. So tomorrow, amongst other jobs, I've got to take two of our big steers from next door. They're going to slaughter. Um, I've got a subscribe. Oh. Women. I got a subscriber coming in tomorrow to see us, apparently. In the morning, I think. What? Oh, okay. Okay. They're shouting at each other. Uh, the slitting raking that I'd uh, earmarked for today is completed. Done all that. 
I just want to make sure and see if you guys have got enough for tonight. Uh, yes. <coughs> provided I get up early and give you a bell first thing in the morning. <coughs> Six o'clock. <coughs> I might come down in a couple of hours and see what it's like. So I, I've been out in the field today and they've seen me out there and they've been bellowing all day because they want to go out, but it's too wet, far too wet, and they will chew it up and the grass isn't away yet. So they can't go out yet, so. Soon, but not yet. Well, the house was nice and peaceful, but now Julie and uh, Holly have come back, it will probably be less peaceful. That's the downside. The upside is, Julie's home, I'll probably get a cup of tea. So, right, quick look at this concrete, which should be going off quite well now. Um, I doubt it'll be tomorrow, probably Wednesday. We will lift him back on the jack. He's actually sitting partially on the jack, but mainly on that um, oak block there. So we'll lift him up and then put him down, sat on the ground properly. I don't know if you could see him from there. My pretty, not very straight lines. But like I said, they're not straight on purpose because the footpath that goes down the middle there, I haven't gone over that. I've not uh, slit it, I've not raked it. Um, I've gone down both sides, so I've had to follow the footpath, hence the bend. That's a really, really good excuse and the truth. So, which is why we haven't got straight lines. When I come to roll it, I will make more effort, because uh, that's the next job out there is rolling. Uh, I'll make more effort to um, nice straight lines. But I'm wondering whether I actually roll it that way rather than up and down because the dips go down long ways, well most of them, so I might roll it that way. More turns, but I'll see what the mood's like. If I feel like it, I will, and if I don't feel like it, I won't. So you'll find out in due course. See you tomorrow.